Well, a costume department keeps track of everything they make. We keep track of the buttons that we make it with. Here's Pantones for Camp Nowhere. Here's our roast beef logo, how cute. Here's the made to order sheet for Karen Wheeler's bathing suit. So we go from here to here. Hi, I'm Amy Paris, costume designer of Stranger Things, and I'm excited to show you some of my work. Season four, knowing that we'd be in four different huge locations, I wanted to definitely make sure the color palette like showed through the screen. So we made sure that the stock was specific for each location. We knew that Russia would be like darker and scarier, so we made sure that those clothes really reflected that in the uniforms. Hawkins is still its classic like dusty, rusty, but with saturated colors. So we made sure to really like make it pop between each frame. I definitely leaned into the movies of the 80s that like reflected high school kids, like Tough Turf or One of the Guys, and used that and yearbooks from the location and the region. So if it was California, we were looking at California yearbooks. And when we were doing Hawkins, we were doing like Midwest yearbooks from like 84 to 86 so that we'd really make sure we were following the right trends of the time. Ali Sheedy for The Breakfast Club was a huge inspiration for Eden. Brooke Shields was an influence for Nancy. Molly Ringwald was an influence for our new character, Vicky. Part of our process is building stuff that we need multiples for. So often we'll make fabrics or boots or belts or hats. And so I often use like a fabric printer and we take our fabric samples and our colors and we find out what works best for the outfit. You might recognize this as the milkshake dress from Eleven in the roller rink scenes. And we knew we wanted a kind of like soft linen fabric. So we printed it on multiple styles just to make sure it would have the right hand and the right feel. I think mine and my team's eye is so trained to see 80s clothing. We really do use real vintage pieces almost entirely for stock. You need to be head to toe, like authentic to the period. Otherwise it'll stand out, it'll show. 11. It felt important to make her feel mismatched because she's trying to figure out who she is in this new space. You know, being in California, let alone being in a new high school, you're trying to fit in. And so you definitely try different outfits, you try different friend groups, you try different things to see where you fit. And so it was important to show that she'd have pieces that might have been hand me downs from Joyce, might have been borrowed from Will, maybe even hand me downs from Jonathan. And she doesn't have Max there either, so she may have some leftover pieces from the mall, like the milkshake dress, but she doesn't know that it's weird to pair it with Will's old shirt, you know? So it was important that even in the frame with Will, she'd kind of look like she's wearing his clothes, but then also throw a dress on it that she's like, well, this, this goes, right? We found the best thing to do was to actually throw a real milkshake on it. And our prop master, Nico, physically threw it on the dress that we had on a dress for him. And we loved the way it looked. The Duffers loved it. So we thought, well, let's let it dry and see what happens. It dried and it dried well. And so we actually used that. And that's the dress she's actually wearing. Physically, it has real milkshake dried on it. Then of course you need multiples because she's wearing it, a photo double's wearing it, a stunt person's wearing it. So to match, we had our Adria Dyer Gale paint an exact replica of the milkshake on the dresses so that each one matched. The roller rink was so special and different. We did that at the end of the season. Shirts are custom made. They also of course have like the custom graphic, but we couldn't find this shape of a shirt for the men and the women. So we just built them. The shorts are um, special Velveteen shorts, which are vintage, but the trim was not pink, which matches the jacket. So we had to take off the trim and replace it with a new trim. The jackets were custom made. We put custom ribbing and put the Wrinkle Mania logo on the back. And then what you don't really see is a lot of the employees had these cute little suspenders that have little like roller skates on them. So even if you don't see a detail, it's there. It was kind of last minute, but we knew that we needed a blood splatter. And I felt like the best way to achieve it was to physically drag something in blood. And it was at night and I'm about Millie's size. So I figured I'll throw it on. And then I let my assistants drag me through the blood. So we set up a table uh, cloth on the floor and put like blood puddles. And we talked to the ADs, we talked to the duffers, we asked what it would look like and how the blood pattern would go. And it was still a work in progress and we knew we needed to see the blood first. So they strapped belts on my ankles and then pulled me through the blood pattern sort of in the way that we anticipated them doing and then took the picture and showed it to them and got approval. So that is also something she's wearing because it's actually the real like pattern to what it would have been. Steve Harrington. 
We knew that it was time for them to get out of Scoops Ahoy, <laughs> so it was nice to give them a uniform that's a uniform but still could show their own clothes underneath. So we felt the best way to do that was with a vest. So we took some creative licensing in making the vest, but it's, you know, green and orange. That's a thing you could put over any outfit and it's a uniform, but it's still, it shows their personality through. So it was nice to be able to, to get to do that and let them shine. With Steve, he's classic Steve, you know, polo shirts, he looks good in jeans. He's been wearing those Levi's jeans, like kind of all seasons and they fit him so well because Joe Keery doesn't, age or get any bigger. He's just sort of this magical human that stays like pristine. So like, we keep giving him the same jeans. <laughs> he keeps wearing them. I gave him a different jacket this season. I gave him like a more 80s gray jacket, which kind of echoes the members only gray jacket, but kind of made it even more 80s. I mean, they're both so iconic and they're both so 80s, but it was nice to kind of just move it and make it familiar and gray, but make it a little more like exciting and 80s. Jim Hopper. The Russia stuff was really challenging, but really rewarding. I had never worked internationally and we went to Lithuania. So we were able to source costumes in Poland from Hero Costume ahead of time. So you heard from them? Yeah. They arrived last night. They're meeting Yuri soon. All goes well, but tomorrow night you're home. Eating answers with your sexy woman. She's not my woman. Of course not. She saves your life because of friendship. You can't get a plethora of like Russian prisoner uniforms to use on an American TV show, so we knew we'd have to build them. And we made name tags, and Sean Levy actually came up with the idea to have David's a custom name tag. It says American in Cyrillic. So those uniforms, the fabric is meant to last for Russian prisoners that should be durable. So imagine breaking down freshly new outfits that should be on camera, but look like they've been around for 40 to 50 years. I mean, that is so much work for our ager dyers. You have to take off the color, you have to add distressing, you have to add dirt and grime. So we were working on those up until they were on camera. And even then some adding dirt on top and like constantly trying to take them down because they're so rich in color that you almost have to go further so the camera sees the distress and the dirt. So it was a lot of work. I mean, physically just like pounding on those uniforms, it's it's a lot. It's a it's a whole other color palette. You know, it's like the dark, the blue, the green, the scary, the dark red. You know, we used authentic hats. We used authentic pieces as much as we could. The gloves are real. David's uniform, he needed about six of them. In addition to just like distressing these outfits for all the prisoners, then it's distressing them for the actors to have at least like six or more. So it's, it's a lot of work. Dustin Henderson. Yeah, it's been exciting to get to change his hat up because it is such an iconic piece for him. I knew I wanted to do something different because he's not in camp. So the thinking cap felt like a, a hat that he'd find at the mall and buy. The Scantron shirt was a fabric that I found in Atlanta at a fabric store Then it's like bubbles that I thought I could see Dustin like sitting in class getting bored and filling that in. So we made the shirt and I talked to Gaten about it and I said, can you imagine Dustin doing that? And he was like, oh yeah, of course. So my friend Trevor who made the Hellfire logo actually did the artwork on the shirt. Ah! No, 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 my face! Dude! What are you doing, man? Setting up base of operations here. Base of operations? Stop, get off of no, that. No, I need it. Need it for what? Looking up Eddie's friend's phone numbers. Oh, Eddie. Your new best friend, Eddie, you think is cooler than me because he Ed. plays your nerdy game? Yes. I never said that. This is exciting because it's kind of like Zelda type in imagery, you know, like video game stuff. So there's a castle and a, like a Viking shooting arrows at an elf with a guy on a horse and then it connects to the back, which has this fire breathing dragon. And there's a wizard down here, which is a lot like the will wizard from season three. Eddie Munson. The Hellfire Club, we knew we wanted it to look like the boys in the club made the shirt. So we were really specific about the logo. And you know, we used research and images of young D&D club players. So I knew a lot of them had white with black sleeves just cause that also pops and then you can see the logo really well. So we tried black with white sleeves, we tried red, but really the one that stood out the most was the white uh, base and the black sleeves. So then we built on that and we found a leather jacket by the brand Shot, and that was the perfect slim jacket that could be over his shirt, but then have a vest on top. And so the vest is a vintage Levi's trucker blanket line jacket. Somebody had cut the sleeves off, so it had the right amount of fray. There's distressing on the collar. Everything about it was the perfect level of like worn in, he's probably had it forever kind of guy. Absolutely not. You asked for a sub, we delivered. This is Hellfire Club. Not babysitting club. I'm a loving you long haired freak. My, my. The child speaks. <laughs> we added a belt buckle that has like a handcuff on it. 
We gave him his Reebok sneakers with the tongues pulled out because he would have done that in the 80s. We gave him like a chain on the leather of his jacket, like maybe the zipper broke and he tried to like close it. So we really focused on little details. He listens to that wizard medal. He has Dio on the back and that is actually a, a gift from the estate of Ronnie James Dio. His ex-wife Wendy sent us vintage shirts and sweatshirts and stuff that we were able to use. So yeah, this is our exciting Eddie vest that we love. We kind of stitched it so it would look like he did it himself. Some of the pins we had to like tech down so they wouldn't be so bright and shiny on camera, but they're all vintage pins of bands that he would have been a fan of in the 80s. So we have Iron Maiden, Megadeth, Motorhead, Judas Priest, Wasp, except Merciful Fate. This is the Levinthian cross. This is in the back of his pants. This is like the vintage custom handkerchief and his handcuff belt buckle, which we also had to like tech down so it wouldn't be so shiny. Oh yeah, and this is our original Dio patch on the back. We did need about five Eddies at one point because Eddie also gets dirty. He gets, you know, like black blood from the bat fight. So you have a clean, you have a dirty Eddie. You also need to have the vest that goes to Joe Keery. And so there's a Joe Keery vest as Eddie and then that's dirty. So it was a challenge, but it was so worth it. He's the perfect Eddie. He really is. Joy Spires. It was such a different element knowing we were going to Lithuania to shoot Lithuania as Russia. And our intention was to keep our actors as warm as possible. We knew they'd be freezing and we knew we'd be stuck in these clothes for a while. So we had tried building in like heat packs, like electronic heater that was like built inside the outfit to keep them warm. That would work at times. We made sure we gave them hats and like comfort gear, but I wanted to make sure Winona would stay warm as a human in a really cold climate. She has a lot of ideas for the characters and she knows the character best. So it's nice to kind of have a formula and to know a fit. The jacket does a good job of like being a feminine, like mom coat that she would have had from Hawkins and then brought to California, but never wore since because you wouldn't need a coat in California. There's like a science to like the fit of the pants now. We know exactly like where they sit on the waist, exactly how they bail out over the shoes. We probably won't ever get her out of a white Reebok sneaker. <laughs> I mean, those are her shoes. Those are Joyce all seasons, I'm sure. Nancy Wheeler. There's like a hint into Nancy's dress, that that dress that had the, the purple dress with the teal. And we had to remake that because we needed a double. So the original that she wears is vintage, but then the stunt one is not. Or here's her shirt that we made for them all. Nancy is now getting a little more serious with school. She's getting ready to go to college. And so we kept her still in her sweet pastel color palette. It was nice to make her feel even more mature than just dresses like we did last season. And the stripe shirt, I enjoy keeping her battle outfits in stripes because season one and two had her in that. So season three, she's in stripes at the mall. So I knew I wanted to keep her in stripes for this season. And we knew that there was a moment where she would need to rip off a part of her outfit to help Steve when he's hurt during the um, bat fight. So it started off as the cowl neck, but we noticed that that was a little complicated and the continuity of that mixed with like having a raw edge around her face. So much of TV is here that I kind of didn't want to distract the audience with like looking at this like ripped shirt all the time. So we progressed it and found it was better for it to come off the ribbing at the bottom of the shirt. So we had a lot of tests with that, making sure that we could sort of like score the fabric and make it easy for Natalia to rip on the day. The cowl neck and the ribbing was custom dyed to match the stripe so that it would be the right color. And then once it's built and aged and dirtied, then it's like pre-cut so that she could rip it easily. Well, you know what they say, those who can't do, teach. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Yes, that's actually why we're here. Nancy's outfit is all made from scratch. Um, we made the shirt and the little two-piece set, which has a cute little wraparound belt. And then Maya's is a custom shirt and skirt. It's just the only original vintage piece is the sweater. And we did have to remake it in multiples for the girls. The sweater we cheated for the for the like driving double and we gave a very close match, but luckily it's driving double so you don't see that it's not the perfect match. We got to make custom boots for Nancy this season that have a matching belt. And we did that with Jitterbug Boy in Canada. So that was fun to be able to have the time to do that because I knew she'd need boots, but I knew there weren't really any current boots that have enough 80s details that are passable. So I said, let's make them. So we did. Mike Wheeler. 
That's a rad shirt, man. Ocean Pacific? Oh, hey, Mike, this is uh, my friend Argyle. Oh, hey. Oh, no, no, no. No, it's a shitty knockoff. Yeah. But don't sweat it, man. I'll get you the good threads out of here. So Mike Wheeler's outfit was written to, into the script that way, and it was written that our guy would go, oh, hey, cool shirt. So we knew we'd wanted something that felt like an outfit maybe he would have bought at the airport before he got there. <laughs> so it's kind of hokey. You know, it says surf on the back, and there's surfboards, and it's bright. It's not a color that Mike normally wears, and he would have accessorized it with a hat and sunglasses with croquis, knowing he was going to be outside in the sun. He wears flip-flops. And the outfit was actually manufactured by Quicksilver. We had a collaboration with them, which was really helpful because during pandemic, we couldn't make clothes fast enough. We had made two colorways. We made orange and teal, and he's worn teal before, so it felt like orange was the best color that was different from his closet that felt like he was trying to make it work in California. Shit, he seems really revved up today. He's always revved up. Well, just act casual. Casual. Casual, right. Okay. Totally. It's interesting because he's definitely influenced by Eddie, so we added a little darkness to his clothes. Like, he's wearing black jeans this season. He's also wearing Converse, which it feels like something that he thought Eddie would probably wear. So it's cool to kind of slowly edge him a little bit darker and a little less preppy. You know, maybe his mom's not buying all of his clothes now. The shirt that he's wearing in teal has, you know, like the diamond shape, and it's a, the angles of the shirt are a little more edgier. So it's like you're physically seeing sharper images and sharper corners on him because he's turning a little bit edgier. Max Mayfield. She's still in mourning. Her brother had passed not too long ago, so we had done this first outfit, the outfit of the grid pattern shirt with the sweatshirt, and it is a little brighter than I think I would have wanted it to be looking back, but it was right as we were like coming back from pandemic, and I think we were all trying to figure out how to keep the show going, and it had been in the works, so it is what it is, but later on the next outfit is a little darker, which reflects that she really is kind of in mourning and trying to cover up. So. The outfit is kind of baggy, the jeans are kind of baggy, you know, she's kind of trying to hide it and protect herself in her clothes. We had made this outfit, the grid shirt was made, and then the sweatshirt was made, but the second outfit is a hang 10 corduroy jacket with a Target shirt. And again, we kind of bought it during quarantine and it was sort of like, you can get what you can get. And so shopping was really limited and so we only had a couple and then we found out we needed so many more. So we have our shopper Caroline Hodge, who's wonderful, she combed through the internet and found every possible Target green striped shirt she could on Poshmark. <laughs> so she she did end up finding quite a few. You know, those are the challenges that you have to overcome when you're dealing with multiples and things selling before you know that you need that many. Part of the, the way to avoid that is to build it yourself, to have the control of like printing the fabric or making the boots or finding the leather, like doing the stuff yourself so that you know you can recreate it because this is a show where you kind of don't always know what's gonna happen. Lucas Sinclair. I found out that Lucas would sort of be a jock type in reading the script. So it was a balance of figuring out how he's kind of jock and kind of hanging out with, you know, Jason and those guys, but still part of the D&D &D club. So he's sort of, you know, between friend groups and balancing that out. We were able to give him custom Converse sneakers that Converse made for us. He wears those with the uniform that was also custom made. For Lucas, the balance of making his outfits still kind of nerdy D&D &D, and then kind of jock-like allowed us to make him a little bit sportier and add, you know, like kind of add an athletic look to his clothes. It was important to like make sure it felt like an outfit that wasn't too nerdy, wasn't too cool. It was a balance. Marie Bauman. Aren't you out of sight for sore eyes, huh? Hi, Murray. The kids like risotto? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the apron was actually, uh, that. that's props to props. That's props to Nico. He found that apron. We had smaller vintage, like, women's aprons that, in theory, would have maybe been Joyce's, and she's a petite person, so we had tinier ones, but they were almost too tiny. So it was nice to have like a more substantial bib apron and that was Sean Levy. He was like, I wanna be able to see it up here. So we found this bib apron that is so perfect. It totally looks like an apron she would have had also. So that was a, a props prop. So thank you props. <laughs> and will you please stop trying to talk to me and stay in character? Remember, you are frightened, scared, 
confused. Yes, I am frightened, scared, okay. and confused. All right, yes. Marie's really exciting and one of my favorites because most of that is custom made. Um, we started knowing that we'd need to have layers that would be revealed. So we had, uh, we were between two coats, a teal coat or a brown coat. And the teal was best because it's worn with this beautiful hand knit sweater that was hand knit for the show. Um, it kind of has that golden mustard color worn with a brown turtleneck. This is Murray traveling. So Murray might dress up because now he's like outside of his house, which he's kind of a hermit. So when he's outside, it's nice to see him get kind of gussied up. Back in the eighties, you used to kind of dress up a little bit more for traveling. So we gave him a gold chain. You know, he's single. Maybe he's out to meet people. Robin Buckley. So that is a Wrangler's jacket that we knew we wanted to give the girls some layers because we knew they'd have to eventually lose jackets when they jump into the water. And it was nice to give Maya a little like DIY chance to kind of put her own spin on it. So we grabbed an assortment of like vintage patches and was like, what do you like? You know, so she actually, Maya hand picked those patches and we talked about where we would place them. It felt real, it felt like what Robin would do with Maya's influence. The yellow sh over shirt that she wears for quite a while in the season has like a leaf print and then we, we custom printed it. So I added some triangles and some equality symbols to kind of have an Easter egg that there's some LGBT BTQ plus imagery within her outfit. You know, I felt that was important to help represent her for that. Oh my gosh, those are cool. So those outfits are legit like 80s uniforms. So I think it's marchinglinks.com. There's a website that you can actually go to. All the piping in the band uniforms are like hand painted orange. The feathers on their caps, those are custom made with like orange tip. And we added the little patches, the cummerbunds all had to be like hand painted and hand dyed to be the right color. I'm itching all over. It's so cute, right? That was fun to get to do because Maya was excited to show something that's like not a typical Robin moment. And so we were collaborating on that, like how it should feel around the neck and how tight it should be. I think it turned out beautifully and I think Maya's performance in it really helps. And that's always nice to be able to lend the clothes to the actor's performance for her to say, I'm uncomfortable in this, you know, and to like use that and help them aid in, in something that's uncomfortable or something that feels good or bad. It's nice to be able to use the costume to help the actor give that performance. Will Byers. He's the youngest of the boys and he's grown the most and matured a lot in this last season. And with the pandemic and with the break in between, you definitely see an age progression, especially in his face, but also in his body, you know, like there's more muscle definition and stuff. So you kind of, you either need to lean into that or lean away from it. So we hit his arms a little bit just to help hide that. But between season three and four, he was in stripes a lot for season three. And so I kind of brought back the plaid for season four because he's in Hawkins, which is a little bit more fashion forward. So it was nice to have kind of that old plaid style still running through his character. Argyle. Uh, that was fun to do because it is so different from anything we've done. So it's authentic um, pieces that are either recreated by Quicksilver from the 80s, which was really nice to get to do and collaborate with them on, or it's like vintage stuff. It's hard for him because we needed a lot of multiples. So a lot of things were made in, in doubles or triples. Um, but, you know, wearing down the shoes and giving him like mismatched socks and pins on his um, hat as well. Like, you know, Eduardo's wearing bracelets and some of them were done by like friends who have daughters that can do like friendship bracelets. I was like, can you ever make like five, please? <laughs> it was nice to make it feel like it was real. I mean, he probably would have made them himself, you know, like, again, it's nice to put yourself in the mind of the actor and think if they're bored at high school, they're gonna color on their shirt or they're gonna make friendship bracelets or they're gonna find pins that they're gonna put on their clothes. So it's nice to like take the time to be more authentic that way. Dead dude. I'm making him a headstone. And you do realize we spent all morning hiding the body. Well, I'll, I'll just write, uh, here lies unknown hero agent man. It's an iconic yellow. And right now when you look up visors, they're not as long and they don't have the terry, right? And so inside, like, especially in California, be warm. So it actually has that terry cloth inside, which was a big 80s thing to do. The brim is longer and the like, 
the height of it is higher than they are now. That helped kind of sell it as more of a period visor than anything we could find in the stores right now. And the custom um, Surfer Boy Pizza logo, that was from the art department, and that was scripted, of course. So it was nice to kind of imagine that a pizza shop in the 80s would have done like a one color screen print, just pump out these shirts. So we just did red on yellow, which is super graphic and bright. And it was, you know, why not add the visor? And he has, his hair is such a character too, you know? So part of my design process for him was to give him all these bright patterns and colors, knowing you wouldn't see so much of it because his hair covers it. So logos, graphics, you know, you'd lose them behind the hair. So it was nice to have stuff that would kind of pop out am amongst it, <laughs> if that makes sense. Jonathan Byers. That was an exciting shirt to get to do, and he was an exciting costume to like move through because he's in California now, and you know, he's kind of like absorbed this like 420 lifestyle, so it was nice to be able to show that through the fabric that he was wearing. He's in iCat print shirts at the beginning, and then I knew we'd want to build a shirt that he'd track through because he's in it for so many episodes. So that's a fabric I found. It's like a vintage dead stock fabric at a store called Rag Finders in downtown LA. We over dyed it and then built this beautiful shirt that almost feels psychedelic. It was a lot brighter and I knew we'd need to like take it down. So we over dyed it so it wouldn't be so bright, but it was fun to kind of feel like you'd look at the shirt and be like, what is that? You know, like that's kind of how his mind is as he's like going through his like 420 time. He's definitely influenced by Argyle. So I think, you know, brightening him up and giving him a color. It was like kind of the perfect pattern for this outfit. Erica Sinclair. Back in the 80s, it was really big on sets and matching pieces. So it's a very coordinated outfit. It's something I probably would have worn at her age. And so that was fun to get to do. We screen printed uh, the pink fabric and then made the dress with fabric that we found at Fine Fabrics in Atlanta. I wanted Erica to still look youthful. And that's that's a interesting thing to do because Priya's growing. You know, she's becoming a woman. She's like, you could see it in her face. She's at an age where personally she wants to look older, but she also should feel the age that she's supposed to be on camera. So it was tricky to kind of balance that and make her feel feminine and young and keep her looking younger than she actually is, if that makes sense. Yes, the American flag cape is so fun. So that's our prop master, Nico. He supplied the cape and we had fun in the fitting, like playing around with that. It was written in the script that she would show up that way. So I like when the script's really specific about really like big props and costume pieces like that. That's fun to get to add. I think it's also nice that her clothes are so like, like genuine and sweet and girly, but she has such an attitude, you know? So you wouldn't expect the mouth of that girl to look like that. It was so fun to get to do that. Dr. Martin Brenner. The work that Modine does is a complicated timeline. And so in order to showcase that and help the viewer know what timeline we're in, we tried to make sure that the, the suits that he's wearing are very specifically 70s, that wide lapel, those long collars, you know, the pattern and the tie is specific to the era. So that kind of helps the viewer to see when it's 70s to when it's 80s or even a like 60s flashback. Vecna. Yeah, I mean, this was really cool to get to work with Jamie Campbell Bauer on this because he's the perfect Vecna. And knowing that this outfit sort of establishes his character before we find out who he is, it was really important to make sure that it was really stark, really clean, kind of perfect. You know, he plays the character so well, I wanted the costume to aid in that. So we made sure the fit was just right. We made sure that it was like perfectly clean, perfectly fit and kind of creepy, you know? And I think the, the all white with the black belt and the black shoes does just that. Thanks for having me, GQ. I'm Amy Paris and those were my fine points.